Greetings, fellow citizens of Disneyland. Bricky here, just stepping out of the premiere of Rogers the Musical. They did a preview tonight for folks that work over at Marvel, as well as D23 members. I was fortunate enough to be able to snag a ticket with my buddy Kyle, and uh, I'm gonna give you a spoiler-free review of the show, and then at the end, I'll tell you if I'm gonna give out any spoilers, and then you'll just know to stop watching there. So let's jump in. First off, it was fantastic to be back inside of the Hyperion Theater. This is kind of the last major piece of the park to reopen since Disneyland closed back in the early sad days of March 2020. Let me hit it right there so maybe you can see it a little bit better. So it was great to be back inside of there. And one of the early attention to details that I was able to find was the fact that during Touch of Disney, there was a park-wide radio announcement. K, oh, I can't remember what the call letters were, but it was like old-timey announcer, old-timey radio station. They actually brought that back as part of the pre-show, which is just one of those subtle, everything in Disneyland is tied together, and I absolutely loved it. The show is a solid 30 minutes. It moves really, really quickly. It's 90% singing, a little bit of talking to get in between the different transitions. The stage has about five or six different setups and like a traditional Broadway play, things are sliding in, things are sliding out. There is a revolving like uh, part of the stage that they use just a little bit to add some flavor into it, which I thought was a great part of the show. But let me give you a quick heads up on who that I think that it's perfect for and who maybe might want to think about not doing this. Who it's perfect for are Marvel fans that want to just see something from the big screen come to life. That part of it was a huge success. Who it's perfect for are Disney Park fans that have been missing live entertainment in the parks. The Lion King show was good but this is just another level of production and that's the luxury of doing it indoors at the Hyperion Theater. Who it's also good for are people that are into Broadway and musicals and love that flavor of entertainment because it absolutely delivers in that realm. Who I think might want to skip it is people that don't like musicals. I'm not really a musical person, but I was entertained. I enjoyed being in the room and seeing it all come together. But if I'm being honest, there's probably a big part of me that just enjoyed knowing that this space was back open. I also have a natural curiosity of all things Disneyland, so I wanted to see that. But it also felt great to be a part of a community moment where everybody was in there and celebrating. And you can see there's still folks lining up and taking photos. There was bounding, like just the citizens of Disneyland, as always, they showed up, they gave it their all. They're always awesome. Who else might want to skip it is really young ones. It's adult oriented. I mean, you know, not in like sexual nature or its language, but it's just a big story told in a very, very fast way. So there's not really a lot of low hanging fruit like The Simpsons, for example, Homer bumps his head, kids laugh because Homer bumps his head, adults laugh because of the other level of humor that's going on with Homer. This one's just sort of all at an adult level. So I don't feel like there was a lot for kids to do and 30 minutes can be a long time to sit in one seat. And speaking of the seats, the seats are tiny. I forgot how small those seats are. I believe the theater holds about 2000 people and you are really, really packed in there. But I would like to suggest I sit on the mezzanine level and I purposely sat in the very, very back row so if I wanted to stand up for filming for a more detailed video that'll be going over on my other channel, Hey Bricky, that I could stand up and not bother anybody or hold up my camera and not block anybody's view behind me. I never had to stand up. In the back row, you could see everything perfectly and I would definitely recommend trying to get a mezzanine spot just because the view is so good up there you just have like a fisheye look into everything that's happening below you. So definitely shoot for that level. I'd be worried that if you're on the lower tier, that you'd end up having a hard time looking over everybody's heads and seeing everything. But I will say a couple of quick critiques. 
trying to figure out that guy's a very loud talker. <laughs> a couple of quick critiques that are maybe slightly spoiler-ish. Nothing about the plot, but just there were a few singers that their songs were just at the edge of their range, or maybe they've been practicing so much that they were a little bit vocally sore. So there were just a few singers that couldn't get there, but I would say 95% of them were dead on the money. And then also, if you saw the Aladdin show here, there was that moment where the magic carpet came out over the, the audience. Uh, there was also in the Frozen show, the, the when the dress revealed, there wasn't, for my money, that OMG, like gasp, like how did they do that moment? But then again, this is only supposed to be going for two months, so maybe they didn't want to invest that into a two month show. Now, one of my theories that I had was that the reason why that this is only five days a week is because they have one crew that they want to do this. And after seeing the quality of the performance, I'm gonna say that that was a dead on assumption because this cast is really, really good. Everybody seemed super pro and talking to friends right afterwards, everybody's like, yo, this is right on a Disney out of the parks level of entertainment. So. I would think that the reason why they have those off dates is definitely because they want to keep this core crew going five nights a week and doing all the performances and it shows because they are really, really good. And in fact, I don't think that I need to do any spoilers. I think you should come out and you should see it for yourself. It was fun. It went fast. Maybe not perfect for everybody, but definitely perfect for a lot of folks. Friends on the edge of the Hyperion Theater, which is now back open. One more step back to normal at our beloved Disneyland Resort after everything that we went to, and it feels good. Hopefully you get to see Rogers the Musical and its two month run, but I have a feeling it's gonna be a big hit and it might last a little bit longer than two months. Thank you so much for showing up. I cannot wait to see you standing on the edge of Rogers the Musical at the Hyperion Theater open again. Yes.